Coming up, a Sad Styles production. Get into it! Today, we're just little monkeys as we climb vines and vilify Mario in our attempt to save our father. We celebrate the 40th anniversary of Donkey Kong Jr. this week on the Retrograde Podcast. Welcome to the Retrograde the Podcast, where we remind you what you used to love and whether or not you still should. I'm Adrian Baskin, and with me as always is the bad boy of podcasting, Mr. Bebop himself, Mikey Kong Jr., Aaron Word. Mikey Kong Jr. I mean, it's just too easy. I had to do that one. I'm sorry, con- contractually speaking, <laughs> yeah. I had to use that name. Feels like you're on a couple in a row of going like, what else was I going to do? What like, else was it, I going to do? I have to. Andrew, my hands are tied. Right. I, there are only so many things you can ask me to do. Right. And and listen, just like our hands were tied with having to focus a week of our podcast on Donkey Kong Jr. Because it's the 40th anniversary of this wonderful, dare, dare I say wacky? Whoa, whoa. whoa dare I say whoa. wacky little game? Wacky Kong? Wacky Kong. <laughs> it sounds like there would be a wacky Kong. It does sound like there. Okay. Because I'm glad we're going to talk about this. Okay. The 23 and me of the Kong family. <laughs> yes. Explain to me the family tree of how this all works. Andrew, I'm so glad you asked because I actually have a prepared statement <laughs> on just this. Um, I don't know if we want to get into it just yet because okay. we're going to spend a lot of time talking about Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. Um, obviously, uh, just, just, answer, just answer me this. Yes. Donkey Kong Jr. is not Diddy Kong. Donkey Kong Jr. is not Diddy Kong. Thank you very much. Don- that is a tease. Donkey Kong Jr. is Donkey Kong's kid. But not the Donkey Kong that you're thinking. Oh, wow. Yeah, it is It is baffling. <laughs> it's confusing. You're going to need a 23 and me to figure this shit yeah, out. Yeah, it's going to be like, a, I need a whiteboard, and we're going to be like drawing lines and yes. like attaching yeah. pictures. No, there are fan theories, and and some of which have actually been corroborated by Nintendo or Rare in some form or another, uh, to say that some of these fan theories are actually true. They've been canonized in oh, some wow. forms. It's, it's, a, it's a wild mess, which okay. we'll go through, hey, as All a right. little bit of a teaser yeah. uh, later on in the episode, right? Okay. Uh, before we get there, Andrew, mm-hmm. you know, this is the podcast where we take a look back at the games that we used to play when we were kids usually it's something we had an affinity towards one way or another Mm -hmm. Uh, we usually take a look back at these games and give them a rating out of four bits based on our memory of what we thought of the games growing up then we take a break play the game and give the games another rating in the modern day against the likes of modern games sounds amazing also out of four bits yeah Uh, i can't wait to do that now full disclosure up at the top uh we talked about this beforehand i don't have many memories with this game no i it turns out because i wasn't sure if i'd even played it And I was looking back at it because I always conflate this game and Donkey Kong Jr. Math, which is another similar game that came out uh, either the same year or a year afterwards. Uh, And and I have played this game. Okay. You know, tip my hand a little. I didn't love it. Uh, So that's why I didn't play it a ton. And we'll talk about that a little bit as we go. But I don't think you've had. I I did not. This not only predated my birth. Yes. uh, By quite a bit. Quite a bit. Yeah. Uh, I never got a chance to play it later in life. Later? No. Uh, what about earlier? Have you gone back in time to play it? Uh, no, I did other stuff. Oh, killed baby Hitler. You killed baby uh, Hitler. Killed baby you Hitler. smothered an infant in his crib. Yeah, it was funny. I was like, really, it was funny. It was, it was, <laughs> it was I was really, I was, everyone around you laughed. I would, Mrs. Hitler was laughing. Everyone was laughing. I was, I, you know, it was really embarrassing though, because I was just like, <laughs> I just killed the child. And then they're like, you killed Adolf Hitler. And I'll be like, I killed who now? <laughs> I was just here for so, the baby murder. Who did you think it was? Oh, I didn't care. Oh, you just wanted no, to I kill just, I, I had bloodlust. You wanted to go so far in the past that no one would, no one would recognize Absolutely you. Absolutely not. And it wouldn't affect your modern day. Yes, exactly. And it just so happened that you killed. And it turns out it uh, didn't do anything. It didn't do anything. No, Someone I don't was there to fill the vacuum of evil <laughs> that exists in our world and in our souls. I don't understand how time travel works. Oh, no. And I don't think anyone does, to be perfectly honest. Every well, description I see, I'm always like, no, but it, it wouldn't affect. And then there's a branching timeline in multiverses. By the way, I don't know if you know this. Oh, Very yeah. popular right now. They, oh, all the rage. All the rage. They're as hot as Hansel was in uh, the early 2000s. Mm-hmm. Everyone's talking about Hansel. Everyone. Hansel was so hot back yeah. then. Yeah, VH1. The whole thing. Yeah. The whole thing. Oh, um, you know what? Actually, here's something before we get into video games. This is just because we're talking about the concept of multiverses and okay. timelines. Um, I thought because we talking about Hansel. Uh, uh, yeah. Let's well, speaking Olo. of Hansel. So this is all conflating. Wow, here, right? multiverse. Right. Like like all the timelines merging into okay. one at the same time. I mean, this is just a conversation piece that that is wrapped up in one little bow. Uh, confusing bow. We, you've seen Loki. As I have. Well. We actually focused on that on the Mushroom Club, patreon.com slash retrograde podcast. Uh, a while back, we mm-hmm. did our breakdown of, of Loki. I loved it. You loved it. Yeah, I really thought am. it was insanely unique. I'd never heard a premise like that quite told that way. I'm reading a book right now called 
it's either Eternity's End or End of Eternity by As- Isaac Asimov. Mm. And good Lord, is that book ever similar to Loki? <laughs> oh, really? It is. It it doesn't make me like Loki less, but everything that they describe in this book or they, he, Asimov, <laughs> describes in this book is very it echoes through to loki including things like hiding in catastrophes because oh. i read that in the book and i was like i i feel like i've heard that somewhere yeah. like that feels like a concept i'm familiar with and then i remember yeah it wow. was it was good old loki wow okay and a lot of people have ripped off ripped off asimov though right? yeah that's true yeah that's true i've uh, seen ai oh uh ai yeah like the robin robin williams movie or you I mean, like I to think it's uh Haley joel osmond movie okay <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but, you know, tweets are on. Um, yeah, so, okay, that's very I've, interesting. I've got, a, I've got a question for you, Andrew, though. Please, I'm right here. Uh, I know, I know, and I've, I've, I've cornered you in this room <laughs> because I've been, I've been hankering to ask a question. Oh, okay. Last week- Tom Hanks Ring. You talked about <laughs> Tom Hanks Ring, <laughs> and I'm going to sign off this question with H-A-N-X, even though it's coming from my mouth, so you know who it's coming from, and there's no real reason for Tom Hanks to sign off mm-hmm. his tweets that way. I mean, for me to sign off my questions that way. Um, you mentioned last week- with the deluge of games coming from PlayStation Plus. Oh, yeah. That you downloaded quite a few. You've bookmarked yes. quite a few. I know you've also been a busy, busy bee. Uh, but have you had some time to to dig your heels into these games? Mikey, I'm so glad you asked. Uh, yes, I have. I've dug my heels. Mm-hmm. I have... Uh, I've been, I've been, you know, going through the games you know, yes. quickly and just kind of like, you're, you're moving your fingers. Yeah, like I'm, nice. I'm, I'm fingering through my games. Yeah. But the games that you downloaded, is this, is no, this no, no, a minority no, no. report I, situation? Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's like a, an Oculus quest where I put it on and oh, I, okay. I have fun looking at my digital media physically through a, v- a visual digital projection. Actually, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> it sounds pretty cool. It sounds like an absolute nightmare. <laughs> We You're going to have to pay a lot of money to digitally project what you physically owed exactly. in Oculus. You're like, have you paid for an NFT version of that yet? No. There would be like a living room projection or something like that where you have a stack of video games and you can have physically take them out of the box and put them in. I've, I've seen that. That does exist. It's really? It, it's crazy because, you know, something that people don't realize that you can do fairly effectively in VR is have a space in which there's a TV which plays a movie or a game that you're going to play. Right. So I've seen... Uh, you put on your VR headset. You're in like what I can only describe as your mom's basement. Yes, 100%. Which the whole neighborhood is familiar with, Andrew. <laughs> wow, and okay, that's, a, that's a shot of my mom's integrity, but uh, that's fine. <laughs> no, no. We're a sex positive neighborhood. Oh, we are. Yeah. Oh, okay. And good. we're all above the I, age of I don't like we. <laughs> we no, me and the gang. Me and the gang are all. Mikey and the gang are totally. We learned so much from your mom. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. I'm glad she was a good teacher. She was a great teacher. <laughs> Okay. Very hands so, on, so and I mean that literally and physically. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. literally and physically. Yeah, yeah. you fi- you fingered through that in sexual education as well. Fingered, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's good. First ten minutes of the podcast. Uh, uh, you know what rating? What rank she gave me at the end of the course? Oh, S tier. S for sexy. <laughs> Um, no, but you can sit in these virtual reality versions of your mom's basement. There's like uh, the, the plush cart, not plush cart, but like a carpet. There's a shag CRT carpet. shag, maybe there's a CRT screen yeah. and you do, you take like a, uh, like a Sega Genesis cartridge, you put it in the Sega, you pick up the controller and that's now, now it's like, you've got a Genesis controller in your hands and you play it on the CRT. You're in this space yeah. looking at a CRT screen and it's projecting to you wow. through an emulator. Wow. So that does already exist. Now here's the thing. That exists as one app that you buy and you have access to all these things. Eventually, it's going to be the thing where you can't grab that cartridge unless you've bought a digital version of that cartridge to put in there. Yeah, You have to buy, yeah, like what? what is the thing with the um, metaverse real estate sandbox yeah and all like people stuff. are buying real estate yes. inside of it and you're yeah. like oh for god's sake like well how do you know it's special if you haven't paid for it andrew that's okay i was gonna say if we don't attach a value of money yeah. to something then yeah. it's not special at all what is, what's the value gonna be emotional <laughs> no it's, this podcast is mike and i slowly becoming socialists over four years <laughs> um okay all right yes i've been playing those games yes. i figuring through the games and i the funny part is the games that i downloaded yeah guardians mm-hmm of the uh, galaxy. Of the galaxy. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Yes. Thank you very yes. much. I want to be clear. Um, Miles Morales. Oh, nice. Valhalla. Yes. Uh, Assassin's Creed. Comma. Assassin's Creed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and You're then, really shortening all these names. I, I'm, I'm a man in a hurry. Okay. Okay. I got so I should stop be, interrupting you then. I, I, this is almost going against <laughs> everything I'm trying to do here. Uh, and then there was one other one as well, and I'll think of it. Sure. But is it the problem with those three games specifically? Yeah. Is that I'm like, oh, great. I have 45 minutes. 
to myself to play a video game at the other night. And it's and it's always like like each game, while beautiful in its own way, yes. has the same thing in the beginning where like you are a child. Yeah. And uh, like somebody older is like, hey, let me take 45 minutes to teach you about this game. <laughs> And you're like, awesome. That is totally cool. The biggest problem with playing games as an adult is, yep. is I don't know why, but a, as a kid learning new games just comes a lot more naturally. The, the concept of like getting your mind wrapped around a new game. Maybe not all of our listeners are like this, but it seems like a lot of our followers over on Twitter at retrograde Mikey, you're at retrograde Andy. We're also at retrograde pod echo the same thing where they're playing these games and the older they get, the harder it is for them to really get absorbed in a game. Yes. There's almost like yes. a natural pushing away of new ideals. Like, like the, the typical can't teach a dog, uh, an old dog, new tricks. And when you have 45 minutes to relax, you don't want to spend it working. And yeah. the first 45 minutes of most games these days feels like work, mm-hmm. uh, especially the ones that you've described. Miles Morales, a great game, but definitely there's some training in the beginning, which you should be able to skip given that it's kind of an expansion. You kind of can. Yeah, yeah, You kind of can, but here, but then, then what am I doing? This is a game in which I actually like the story and Uh like the characters and I'm like, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. I want to kick people in the face. Well, that kind of, doesn't it go against the reason I'm playing the game at all? Like this is, this is the homework. This is the exposition. I got to get up to speed with this, especially like Valhalla. Yes. Like I'm like, who am I? What am I doing here? Oh, my family's been killed or whatever it is. is. This is every morning of my my life <laughs> who am i what am i doing what am i doing my family's been murdered <laughs> you by live, my blood's on my hands you live a very moon night life where you wake up strapped down you're like well time to get up again <laughs> <laughs> why am i english today shit back together <laughs> <laughs> uh, who's that weird seven foot bird that's following me around <laughs> i hope i get to meet ethan hawk <laughs> yeah wouldn't that be nice yeah. eh um yeah is it like that's that is the push and pull that you're kind of talking about. Yes. It's like I want to play these games because the reason I get invested into these games these days anyway is yes, gameplay and all this kind of stuff. But if there's a story that's that's enriching your life that is like actually compelling you to keep coming back and playing it, right? That's great. But if I just want to skip through that really fast, and like Guardians of the Galaxy is the same way. It's like, oh, I like all these characters. Why am I trying to make them shut up all the time? I, you know what's so strange about that? I wonder, and it's it's I like having this conversation because I've been I've been grappling with this a lot lately. Okay, where I. I find myself telling myself I'm not enjoying something and will not enjoy something, especially when it comes to games. So I, I find it hard to start something new where I'm like, I'm like, here's my 45 minutes. And like you said, it's the, it's the intro or something. It's mm-hmm. like, and I'm like, ah, I don't want to do that. Ah, I don't know. I, I don't want to learn these new characters and this and that. It's like, Mikey, your favorite thing in the world is video games. Why won't you just let yourself stew in it for a second? Right. Because like you said, your favorite games are the ones that you've allowed yourself to get invested in. Absolutely. And it happens every time. After that hour and a half that it takes to get into it, I'm fully in. But that hour and a half fucking sucks. Because then, because then also, and I think you more than me, you know, and tell me if this is unfair, but then four hours in, you're like, I'm not into this. Sometimes. And you, or yes. like whatever, four to ten hours in, you're like, I'm not into this. And it's like, well, maybe if you'd learned a character's name, yeah, you'd yeah, be true, more into this true, at this point. True, and that's true. why, I'm, honestly, the other comparison, and I know these could not be, uh, you know, more different on the surface, is books. Mm-hmm. Is the first two chapters when they're like, my name's Bleep Larp, and I'm from this galaxy, and I'm like, oh, God. Oh, you're reading you. Asimov as well? Yeah, I am. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, Bleep Larp also... I would die for. Uh, As, well, listen, Bleed Blower goes to Hollywood. Obviously, Asimov's wow. crowning achievement. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't think enough people talk about Bleed Bur- Oh, Mike, it's okay. It's okay. I would die. I'd fucking kill for I would. I would kill for And every morning I wake up, I realize I've killed my family from Bleed Burp again. <laughs> I need to unstrap myself. <laughs> this torture device i've created yeah i it's it, it books are the same way where i'm like yes. oh my god and they're throwing 100 characters at you and this is the universe and we don't drink but we don't yeah, yeah we yeah, don't yeah, breathe yeah. air we drink blood you know right. you're like oh okay cool totally normal <laughs> and you'd be both <laughs> you're you're missing one of the true joys of life can't i breathe air and drink blood <laughs> the greatest joy of any morning is when I unstrap myself from my bed and I walk outside and I take a deep breath and a warm sip of blood from my cup. <laughs> Andrew, I gotta say, I gotta say. Yeah. We're here talking about breathing air, drinking blood, uh-huh. and you 
you irresponsibly throw the word morning at me. Well, I hear more and I think we're going more BS. I think that's the route that we're going to go. You cannot talk about breathing air and drinking blood. Two of Dr. Michael Morbius' favorite thing to do. You're so right. It's Morbin time. It's, it's, it's Morbin time. And we can't casually bring up Dr. Michael Morbius. No. First of all, terrifying. It's absolutely. Every time I'm now like going to the doctor, I'm like, I have to check. Is it Dr. Michael Morbius? I, nope. When I do, when I have to go get my blood work done. Yeah. I mean, he's great at that. He's so he's good. So good. He just the best. Sucks it in. Spits, it spits into a little back thing. out like a sommelier. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, so which of the games did you end up playing? <laughs> Actually, all three, but I remote. That feels like a bad idea. No, uh, a thousand percent. No, no, I am not disagreeing with you. I did the same thing with each one of them. Like, oh, God. Okay, yeah, yeah, let's yeah, try yeah. this other one. The thing is, Spider-Man, I enjoyed so much. Yes. So thoroughly. And so I'm already kind of in a head start about this Sure, one. sure. And uh, so, like, that's an easy one where I can just go back and play right now. Yeah. Because I, I got through the first level literally level where you and peter parker are taking down rhino and like yes yeah. literally like it's like hey the game's back you're like great okay cool that's totally fun but the valhalla one uh, with assassin's creed uh, is that it's it's that i forgot it was an assassin's creed game for half a second so you're in this like very cool like you're a kid and there's a big battle and you're being taken over and yeah all this kind of stuff going on and then you're kind of fast forward to like you're an adult animus and, time baby and it does it takes it back it goes like it's like oh we're having trouble sinking for some reason i'm like <laughs> what the fu- oh right this fucking backstory I could care less about. Hey, do you like do you like uh, uh, going back in time and living with the Vikings? Yeah. yeah. What about office buildings? <laughs> like, what are we doing? But here's the crazy thing is I've heard so many people talk about how one of their favorite protagonists in video games is Ezio yeah. from the Assassin's Creed For thing, which means they like Ezio as himself outside of the 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 animus and it's like oh so is there is there a part of of that that people really enjoy because in my mind it's a fucking joke i don't want anything to do with those no parts of the i can't when i go to that back to, I, I haven't gone to the level yet yeah. where i go back to that shaved head guy in a white oh, hoodie no thank you and i'm like ah oh, crap and yeah they're like you need to visit doctor no hopefully not Mike Morbius <laughs> on level four and i'm like oh, okay i gotta find where the elevator is i'm like what a fun game i'm playing here yeah seriously a- errands i was just <laughs> able to climb the like the Parthenon or something like yes, that. Yes. I understand that's not in, I don't think that would be in Valhalla. No. Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know. The Vikings were fucking everywhere. It could have been at some point. I just inhabited a crow where I found my friends and then like, went through a village and yes. like killed people and stuff like that. And then they're like, they're like, did you forget the key card for level four? You're like, fucking hell. God what is this, damn it. Doom? Find the exit. Oh, no, thanks. Uh, I'm glad to hear you've started. I, I, I know that feeling that I call it Netflix syndrome of mm. like, there's so many other options at your fingertips that it's very hard to commit yes. to just do doing that one thing. I experience that all the time. Uh, and you know what? I'm experiencing a micro version of that in Elden Ring right now as okay. well. I mentioned I respect my character. I had a Claymore build. Then I accidentally started using a hammer and that's real cool. I can say it's hammer time all the time. That's really cool. Uh, but then I- Did you have baggy pants on too? I did have baggy pants really? on. Really? I, I started dressing like a little like a little uh, MC Hammer over mm-hmm. there. It was fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Stop paying your taxes. I stopped paying my taxes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Hammer and, don't hurt them. And that's when I really got accepted as a lord in the Elden Ring. <laughs> they were like, oh, you get it. Yeah, yes. don't pay that shit. Yeah, what are you talking about? That's surf bullshit, man. <laughs> like, get the hell out of here. Uh, so I find myself now, like, I'm I'm like, this hammer is fucking sick. I love this. Three minutes later, I'm Googling best hammers in Elden Ring because I just can't commit to doing it one way. Like, mm-hmm. it's really, it's I so that's frustrating me a little bit. But I'm like, like I said last week, back on Elden Ring, I'm fucking loving it. I found, I feel like I've gotten myself back in the ruts, uh, not the yeah, ruts like 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 in a good way, like like yeah, kind yeah. of like like a positive rut, yeah, positive rut, like <laughs> on the streamline of of the the natural progression of the game, mm-hmm. and everything feels challenging yet yeah. possible. Yeah, whereas in a before good it felt impossible. Yeah. Um, but uh, challenging yet impossible, like uh, the game we're going to play cool. today, because I thought that Donkey Kong Junior. back when I played it back in the day was was nearly impossible. Mm. It was it was a hard game. I understood the concept of. Donkey Kong, Mm -hmm. the original Donkey Kong. And keep in mind, listener, that Andrew and I would have been playing these games in the 90s, right? Like looking back on these games, 
But the concept of Donkey Kong is very simple, right? You walk up, like you're, you're Mario, or at that point, Jumpman. You, you're walking up the girders and the scaffolding, and you, you got to make your way to the top, jump over barrels, et cetera, et cetera. Very easy to understand. Donkey Kong Jr., the concept of like climbing up vines and, and switching from one side to the other and holding two vines you can climb faster and one you can slide down faster and avoiding all the enemies, it just felt like one more step removed from a basic understanding of point A to point B, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So my little child infant brain, uh, which you could probably relate to now, sure. just had trouble comprehending it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I feel like I kept bumping off of it for that reason. And I know you're not too, like, are you familiar with the the concept of the game? Do you have much of a memory of it at all? Uh, yeah, like I looked up some screenshots before we started. Uh, yeah. That's that's my level of crack research. And uh, <laughs> and I was like, oh yeah, I'm aware of this game. Yeah. But I don't know if I could definitively go like, oh yeah, I played this game. I know everything about this game. Yeah. You know what I mean? And honestly, I think in terms of, like this is technically Donkey Kong 2. Um, uh, you know what, before we get into that, why don't I introduce uh, a little bit about about the the development of the game and okay. all that. So June thirtieth, nineteen eighty two. This okay. is when this game came out. Obviously, came out. Obviously, so this is the the fortieth anniversary that we're dealing with right now. Wow. Uh, platformer released by Nintendo, developed by Nintendo R and D one and two, uh, and it was originally released on the arcade. Okay. Um, primarily designed by Miyamoto and Gunpei Yokoi. Everyone knows uh, Gunpei Yokoi from the Game Boy, Absolutely. and obviously, unfortunately, the Virtual Boy as well. Something I learned though. I didn't know this until now. I'm surprised that I didn't know this. I knew that he made the Wonder Swan, which was an oft highly sought after handheld in the North American. Uh, uh, in like, if you were into games, it was kind of this like, what the fuck is that? Like, yeah, you very rare to see in the wild, but but a handheld thing that I was very fascinated by. But also the Tamagotchi. Did you know Gunpei Okoye was involved in the creation of the Tamagotchi? No, I didn't either. Which is, I, I I've also like when I when I read that. It got me thinking, you know, we have a lot of younger listeners and, and younger people mm -hmm. supporting the podcast through the various social media channels. Do you think there's like a decent percentage of those people who would see a Tamagotchi and not know what it is? No, I think people are aware of Tamagotchi. Yeah, even yeah. even if they were like well past the, the, the age that would have been playing with them? Yeah, okay, so <laughs> I, I know this because in the industry I work at, I, I work with a lot of younger people, right? Yeah, you're in the, uh, the, the uh, human trafficking industry? Yeah, Mikey, that is, a, that is a, mm -hmm. not a funny joke to make. How mm -hmm. dare you? I got out of that years ago. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, you were you were you were fired. <laughs> I was fired. You're fired. I was so I was so good at it too. Um, <laughs> is uh, and so people that are 19, 20 years old, I am now old enough where it has been completely cyclical with fashion and some technology stuff. Yes, where people dress like I did in high school. Right, and I'm like, whoa, what are you like, doing? Like you're gonna regret this. <laughs> and uh, and one of the kids had a Tamagotchi. Mm. And I was like, "You, this is like fun retro attire for you, but I cannot express to you when I was in grade six how important this was to me. It is so, here's the thing. When, unless I'm completely misreading the situation, when a person who's in their 20s right now has a Tamagotchi, there's an element of irony to them having it. Sure. They grew up with so much more access to technology and video games and the capability of having entertainment in your hands the concept of a Tamagotchi was so new and so weird yeah. when it first came out yeah. that I, it, it, it was hard for me to even put into words what it meant to me as a kid. Yeah. I remember hearing about it as a rumor, but you know, pre-internet, mm -hmm. like what it was. So you didn't know... I, we don't have to explain what the Tamagotchi is, right? Well, I'll try your best in 30 seconds. So a Tamagotchi is a little egg-shaped keychain that mm -hmm. had a little LCD screen, and there was basically a pet that lived inside of it. Very rudimentary. I think there were two or three buttons. You can play minor games with it. You had to feed it at certain yep. times. You had to clean up its shit, like yep. there was little shit yep. in there uh, at certain times. And this was all according to a real-life clock. Yes. And the Tamagotchi would get sick, would get hungry, would have to go to the bathroom and would need hygiene and would grow as the days went on and evolve into different species of little yeah. of things. And it was all randomized, so you never knew what you were going to get. Mm -hmm. Now, the mystery around this thing was so fascinating because... I would have it. You would have it. We'd all do the same thing. You would get a different animal than sure. I would. I would show my friends. Like, everyone in the schoolyard had one of these things. Yeah. To the point where, like, teachers had to be like, you can't bring those into class. Absolutely. And we, you, like... As though the teachers were insane, you would say to them, M it will die if I don't feed it. <laughs> so I would I would go to the bathroom like twice a class to go like check on it and everything. Man, I the it was 
one of the, I think of certain things that I've bought in my life or had given to me in my life that were so informative and integral to my growth. I think like Pokemon was one of them, the first Pokemon on Game Boy. Absolutely. And Tamagotchi was one of them as well. A sense of responsibility for something else that wasn't mm-hmm. living, but I didn't have a pet at the time. Yeah. And I knew that it was on me to take care of this thing Yeah. until I left it on the back of my mom's car and she backed out of the driveway and ran over it. Like I'm assuming will happen with one of my kids if I ever <laughs> have one day, we'll see. Did you, did you ever have a class where you had to look after a bag of sugar? Not a bag of sugar. I think it was an egg. egg. Yeah, yeah. Egg. I, mean, I never had one of those classes. No way. Eh? Um, I'm, I just, I, you wonder- just cracked it open and ate the sugar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. I'm like, Oh, free sugar. Man. <laughs> pouring white sugar all over my face. <laughs> no, actually my story with Tamagotchi is, and this is like adorable parent stuff Yeah, where my mom didn't get it for us. And I, I, I was asking, I was like, I really want one of these yes. Tamagotchis. And and then she got it for me at the, like the end of the school year as like a reward. And at that point, it was already it like was not cool anymore. Yeah, and I'm just like, it's like great parent stuff where like they just don't get it. Yes, and I'm like, oh, thanks, mom. <laughs> I think I remember you showing it to me like embarrassed yeah, because like, you got it. and You're like, oh, yeah, fuck I don't know what he wants. Even though were. it was probably three months after it was cool. for sure. And then I remember there was like Dino Buddy that came out after and a bunch of ripoffs. But then there was also the the uh, Pikachu one. Yes, that I did have as well. There was like a little slot machine in there that was that. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. So like, yeah, it, hard to explain if you weren't there yeah. how important Tamagotchi was. Uh, it was like, it was the equivalent of the hoop and stick or the cup and ball, cup and ball for people and growing up in the forties or whenever the fuck they played those things. <laughs> <laughs> Big jumps in technology. Um, so going back to Donkey Kong Jr., a lot of the, as, as we, you know, Tamagotchi, Donkey Kong Jr. Yeah, absolutely, one for sure. A lot of the design work for this one was done by Yoshio Sakatomo, uh, who still works for Nintendo and is uh, the director of, and, and credited as one of the creators of Metroid. So he's 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 got wow. a big hand in that. And that's, again, Donkey Kong Jr. It was kind of like a powerhouse Miyamoto uh, uh, and, and, yes, and Yokoi seriously. as well involved in that. Uh, it's technically the sequel to Donkey Kong. So this is this is Nintendo's version of Donkey Kong 2 because there is Donkey Kong, Donkey Kong Jr., and then Donkey Kong 3. Mm. But there is no quote unquote Donkey Kong 2, right? right? Okay. Um but here's the thing. Donkey Kong you play as Jumpman, called Jumpman in that game. Not not yet called Mario. Donkey mm-hmm. Kong Jr is actually the first game where Mario received the name Mario, which is is kind of cool. Wow. Like he was named in the wow. game as yeah, Mario. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh but Mario's gone rogue. And he's locked up DK. And he is the villain wow. in Donkey Kong Jr, which what a piece of shit. Is interesting. Because in my mind, this mm. is now like the impetus of The Last of Us Part 2, where you're talking about the never-ending <laughs> cycle of revenge. Because in the first game, Mario has his girlfriend, Pauline, kidnapped by Donkey Kong. Yeah. Takes Donkey Kong up. Uh, Donkey Kong takes Pauline up to the top of scaffolding. Mario tries to go mm, fucking whatever, steal back Pauline. Yeah. And then uh, in the next one. He locks up, rightfully so, Donkey Kong. And I know you'd agree because you're a big police state kind of guy. Mm, I don't know. Oh, you're not? No, no, I don't I don't think I am. Also, I don't like imprisoning animals. Oh, you don't? No. What, if you, what if the animal stole your girlfriend? How so? Like literally physically took her physically away? Physically took her like, away. Or like they started a relationship together? No, no, this is non-consensual. Oh, that son of a, that monkey's got to die. That monkey's got to die, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But then what if his kid comes after you and says, you've got to die? And you say, I'm just defending the public peace. Oh my God, this is, the, is this a cycle of violence. A cycle of violence. When does it end? It's an Abby and Ellie all over again. Yes, the <laughs> Mar- Mario and Donkey Kong is Abby and Ellie. Yes, exactly. It's the impetus <laughs> for The Last of Us Part Two. Um, the well, first, Ellie and Donkey Kong. They're both, Ellie and Donkey muscles, Kong, muscles. they're both very strong. Muscular. Although I'm probably taking Ellie in a fight, if I'm being honest. Yeah, I remember Ellie threw a barrel at, at yes, <laughs> at that, Ellie who had a sledgehammer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, her famous red hat. Her famous red hat. Yeah. Um. Uh. So, uh, Mario as the villain feels a lot like Eggman in this. Okay. Where he's like throwing mechanical animals at Donkey Kong <laughs> and 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 entrapping other animals. I'm like, mm-hmm. this is also like the the foretelling uh, Doctor Eggman coming here it was was interesting. Now, here's, I've got, <laughs> big boss. <laughs> I, I wasn't familiar with the just st- like uh, just like Donkey Kong <laughs> big paws yes. are they paused hi Mikey I am what am I Doctor Jane Goodall get the fuck out of here okay I don't know okay Coco let's do the rest of our our podcast in silence <laughs> signing signing as though we were Coco and Jane yeah. Goodall yeah yeah, yeah. I, I'm I'm glad we brought up Coco before we brought up Harambe that's I'm very proud of us that's very, very proud. Proud. that's that's a sign of maturity yes exactly that's exactly. us growing but our dicks are out <laughs> yes. 
for well, Harambe. Well, they are yeah. always. <laughs> always. Under the camera. I'm, my dick's at half mast for, so I, for Harambe. I, I, wasn't sure, <laughs> I wasn't sure about the story of this game until I looked it up back up to do some research. Sure. And I have so many thoughts on this one, okay? Mm. So if you beat the game, okay. you're Donkey Kong Jr., you flat out, no joke, kill Mario. Really? You flat out, Mario is dead on the ground wow. with a halo around him. Oh, wow. But that leads me to believe that you as Donkey Kong Jr. are still the villain because mm. Mario is just doing what's right. He's locking up a bad guy. Yeah. Right? Um, AMAB. All Marios are <laughs> bastards. Um, um, DK kidnapped Pauline and he got caught and he got what was coming to him. Mario shoved him in prison. Oh, oh. Uh, uh, you really got some opinions on this. I eh? do, I do. And he was guarding his rightful prisoner. When he dies, God accepts him. <laughs> yeah, because he becomes an he, angel. He's got a halo. He arguably beatifies him. Yeah. Makes him a saint. Yeah. Now, in my mind, that means that you killed a saint and you should be cast out into one of the cornices oh, of hell. Jesus right? Christ. Yeah. Uh, 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 but but my question is this. If he has been beatified and he's got that, and we know that he has, he's got the halo over his head. What was his miracle? Uh, his miracle was flight? Uh, growth. Oh yeah. Um, a breathing fire. That's a good one. Uh, well, he had the help of of some some plants for that. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, he can summon animals. Uh, or create them. Yeah. So Eggman's a saint too. I wouldn't go that far. Well, yeah, that's where you're going. No, I, I, I honestly, I think each case. Are, it's a slippery slope. No one's denying that. <laughs> No, what? I don't hear. I don't hear me denying this. I just think each case needs to be brought by its own. Uh, it's Mar e Mario, Mar Marriotts, <laughs> Mario. Uh, you know what? I think he got beatified for what? The miracle he did? What? Unclocking my goddamn trains. Oh, <laughs> oh boy, boy. <laughs> Those hey oh. <laughs> uh, you know, and then so the next game should have been Luigi. Stomping the brains out of uh, Stop, stomping <laughs> the brains out, out of, of, of out of uh, Doko Joe. I like <laughs> Doko Joe. I like the idea that the end screen is Luigi walking on on screen, and everyone's like, "Mario, you're alive!" And he's like, "What are you talking about?" And it's just because his clothes are all red now from yeah, Donkey from Kong's blood. blood. <laughs> from Donkey Kong yes, blood. Yes, exactly. I love the idea. It's like there is a Mario here, but his name is Luigi Mario. <laughs> <laughs> like whoa, whoa, whoa. Wow, badass. Um, okay, so you had asked earlier. Yes. Uh, uh, lineage, <laughs> the lineage. Yeah. Okay, so here's where it gets a little messy and a little confusing. Mm. Donkey Kong Junior. is Donkey Kong's kid. That's yeah. that's been established. And Donkey Kong. Yes. And I I want to start with the base level. Yes. Donkey Kong throwing barrels at Jump Man. Donkey Kong Country. Is also Donkey Kong? No. Okay. So Donkey Kong throwing barrels is Donkey Kong. Okay. But the modern day Donkey Kong, uh, uh, <laughs> the modern day Donkey Kong, the one we have in Rare, and the and presumably the one who's driving the go karts. Okay. Uh, and playing tennis. <laughs> yeah, playing <laughs> golf, it's tennis, golf, tennis, whatever it is. Uh, that is the son of Donkey Kong Junior. Holy shit! Which means that. He, that Donkey Kong Jr. is technically the son of Donkey Kong, modern Donkey Kong's grandpa, right? Donkey Kong's yes. grandpa. I'm te that's how your grandpa, son, grandpa, father, son. Right. Yeah. Donkey Kong, the modern, the modern Donkey Kong. His grandpa is Cranky, Cranky Kong. So that means original Donkey Kong with throwing barrels at Jump Man, yes. kidnapping Paulina, is Cranky, is Kong? Cranky Kong. Whoa. Now, this has essentially been confirmed in the Rare games where Cranky Kong talks about kidnapping Pauline <laughs> once a day, like seven days a week, My like God. doing it all the time. He's kind of a shadow of his former self. But more importantly, does this mean that Donkey Kong is a title and not a name? This is like 007? The Sorcerer Supreme or 007 oh, or something Sorcerer like Supreme. that? That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Example. yeah. Um, and then does that mean Diddy Kong is the great? grandson so i i'm i'm ashamed of this i should know this but i'm pretty sure diddy kong is like a cousin of donkey kong okay yeah 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 cool. yeah, yeah 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 um uh very disappointed for, for not knowing <laughs> that um how dare you how dare you and but, then what is the other ones like there's the pilot one uh there's like there's so many there's so many kongs there's so many kongs there's so many fucking kongs <laughs> There's a ton of fucking Kongs. And that's why we need to play this game so we start eliminating how many Kongs there are. Yeah, we we got to start crushing. <laughs> we got to call Luigi in here to start crushing some Kong skull. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the cover 
of of this game, and I'm actually going to pull it up okay. here for you. Okay. Uh, uh, are you familiar with the 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 cover of this game? Have you ever seen I, it? I maybe maybe I don't know because nothing is immediately popping to the top of my head. So the thing that interests me the most about it, and you'll see this, is that Mario is on it. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. But he looks very much like Waluigi. Like Whoa. it's like to, a, to a crazy degree. So we'll, and we'll post this on our socials if Whoa. you want to go find it. He looks like like Waluigi. He's got oh the curly. God. You can see his full eyes, full nose. It says in the corner, "Can the son of Donkey Kong save his papa from Little Mario?" First of all, that's a little condescending. Yeah, wow, uh, his impenetrable prison. Can he do it? And it shows Mario. <laughs> Donkey Kong Jr. is like, "I'm totally gonna penetrate that prison." <laughs> <laughs> Watch your ass. It shows Mario next to so <laughs> impenetrable prison is represented by a giant like the picture perfect dictionary image definition yeah. of what a key and a lock are. Yes. And they are two and a half feet away from each other. Yeah. And Donkey Kong's just in like a regular silver looking cage. It does not look that. No, it really doesn't. But it, it also just goes to show like what Nintendo actually had in mind for this wow. sort of thing. Wow. Which is 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 fascinating because there was a commercial as mm-hmm. well okay for donkey kong jr that came out and there's like a real ass gorilla oh my god a real ass gorilla just like playing donkey <laughs> kong jr oh on on the screen huh um and it's that when you get that like photo realism mm-hmm. of, of video games it makes me wonder like was that an ad company a marketing company coming in and saying this is our version of of our representation of what your video game is or did nintendo actually picture real looking gorillas and human beings interacting in this way right because when they draw mario now he's squat he's he's cartoony yeah but did they originally have this idea of like these are real ass human beings fucking with gorillas this is what a fight between a gorilla and a human would, <laughs> would, be, look, like. would look like and what it would shape out yeah the gorilla is going to resort to throwing barrels you yes. know that yes and also we understand that everybody in this game is christian so that's why he's going to become an angel <laughs> And go to heaven. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Um, the development to this game, uh, we'll move through this a little uh, in a little bit because we're we're taking up a ton of time talking about Donkey Kong Junior. But it's look, fun. that's the that's the that's what this game that's what this this week's game is. Yeah, Doko Joe, baby, Doko Joe. I like I like that you said th- that you said that. Thank Doko you, Joe. Doko Joe. Doko Joe. Donkey Kong Junior is a lot of syllables. That is, Doko Joe is is I'm going to say nonsensical, but it's a right. fun thing to say. And it is fewer syllables. Yeah. All those things are correct. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't have to make sense. I didn't say it made sense. It's I said it, it's fun to say. And now you at home are going to be saying it. You've said it out loud once already. The name of the game is Doko Joe. Maybe we'll title this episode Doko, Doko Joe. Doko Joe really confuse everybody. Just kidding, because we need that SEO, baby. Yeah. Uh, the development of this game, uh, this kind of actually sort of came as a result of an overflow of an I- of ideas for the original Donkey Kong. Uh, they kind of wouldn't fit into the regular game. They wanted to change up the level structure, uh, and they had so many new ideas that were so fleshed out that people in the team were basically saying like why don't we just make a new game out of this conveniently nintendo at the same time was saying we need a new arcade cabinet like another one for donkey kong okay and they said we've basically got this all figured out they couldn't use donkey kong as the protagonist because he was too big for the screen in order to capture because like there's vines hanging and Mm. diddy kong as a smaller character model needs to be able to swing between them okay so they needed the smaller character model, but they also wanted to make sure that there was a uh, a big Donkey Kong in the corner. And it's it, it's amazing to me that Nintendo has so many iconic characters, and the farther back you go in them, the more you realize that what has made them iconic, or even has brought them into existence and prominence in the first place, including some of the mechanics of the game, is relative or related to technical limitations at the time mario's mustache being one thing right the fact that you're diddy kong jr or donkey kong jr is because donkey kong was too big so they had to have someone else uh the fact that the everything the the mechanics of this game were different from the original donkey kong and, and therefore weren't in the original donkey kong game is because there was a limit in memory and time to develop the game mm-hmm. all of this stuff is just because it's like nintendo's looking at technical limitations and figuring out how to make, make the best of it and right. that becomes what makes those things iconic it's kind of serendipity i don't know it's happenstance oh, okay. it's it's artist it's a gift from the artistic gods yeah necessity's mother invention like you you come up with good things because you have to yeah you know i yeah i like that a lot uh reception eighth highest grossing arcade game of 1982 wow which is pretty good uh this is in japan number one 
the number one song I'm yeah. going to go through, go through the top 10. Please. Number one, pole position. In pole oh, position, wow. which is amazing. <laughs> there That's you great. go. Yeah. Uh, uh, Dig Dug, Galaga, yep. mm-hmm. Pengo, Time Pilot, Donkey Kong, the original, oh. Frontline, Donkey Kong Jr., Burn and Rubber, and Mr. Do, exclamation mark. Mr. Do! Mr. Do! Mr. Do! Um that's that's you know in terms of reception obviously it's not going to have the legacy of the original donkey kong i don't know that it was ever intended to it is kind of one of those games where like i feel like you can show one of the screens to people of donkey kong jr and they may like even fans of of games Mm -hmm. and i'm gonna get crucified for this you know don't (laughs) don't don't, don't give me a halo yeah yeah (laughs) with the with the christian iconography um but i don't think many I don't think as many people as you would think would recognize this game based on one of the screens. If you okay. took all out the the defining factor of like Donkey Kong Jr.'s white shirt, mm-hmm. like if you just showed a level without the characters in it, I honestly don't know that as many people as you think would be able to guess what this game is. It just isn't as iconic right. as something like Donkey Kong and is certainly doesn't hold up in terms of history and perception to some of the more modern Donkey Kong games like Donkey Kong Country. Right? Gotcha, okay. Just kind of got lost a little bit. Yeah. And maybe that's why at the 40th anniversary, we're not hearing Nintendo talk about it at all. Mm. 40th anniversary. It's a big one. For a massive game. Yeah. I mean, it, it just, and, and you know, the second in a franchise of Donkey Kong uh but, you know, last year was the the anniversary for the original Donkey Kong, and we also didn't really hear that much about it. So That's weird. I don't know why Nintendo's kind of dragging their feet with that. Is it is it because Mario is in a different light in these games? He's not this, like... Like, if, if Disney wouldn't promote the movie where Mickey Mouse is secretly the villain the whole time. Right. You know, like, I don't know. I just... Cause, because it's so iconic, you know? That's a good point. And you have, like, oh, you have uh, Super Mario World opening up in J- Japan, and you have all these kind of things. I don't know. I, that that could make sense. It's just not the depiction of of Mario that they want, right? And and you know they'll let it exist as it is, but it almost also doesn't feel like a Nintendo game. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like yeah. it's it's such an arcade centric formula that maybe you're right. They were just like it exists. It's part of our history. But you know, like they're not. They're also not celebrating the 80th anniversary of their their deck of cards that Nintendo <laughs> first made when they were. You know, there are certain parts that they want to harbor. Is like this is our new image. It's bright. It's it's a different imagining of what our characters all are. They've all got their own personality, and this kind of works against that. A little right. Bit. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, the last thing I want to say before we get into this one, the world record is owned by a guy named Mark Keel. Uh, Steve Wiebe actually of of, of King of Kong owned yeah. it for for he had he had it twice, but the record right now is one million four hundred twelve thousand and two hundred points. And I'm very curious to see how close to that we get. Do you think we'll break ten thousand? I love this game. Let's let's guess. Do you think we'll break ten thousand? Like we'll break a thousand, I assume. We'll break a thousand. Okay. Okay, here's the thing. Okay. Guess your <laughs> highest score. Mm-hmm. And well, like yeah, okay. how do we how do we structure okay, this? Yeah. This will be fun. I I because okay, so uh I think I'm only gonna get to like forty two hundred. Oh, okay. I think if the what did you say it was one million one hundred forty two thousand? One million four hundred and twelve thousand. Four hundred and twelve thousand. You dyslexic fuck. <laughs> I I who I don't think we're gonna do that well. I bet you it's so. Oh, you don't think we're gonna get one million points? No, 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 no. Okay. No. Um, but uh, but but I think I'll get a couple. I'm gonna guess that I'm gonna get um, eighty seven hundred points. No, you know what? I, I'm gonna guess I'm gonna get sixteen thousand points. Wow. Yeah, you I'm, think I'm you're going gonna big. be good at this? No. Okay. <laughs> but I think that it, I think that it gets exponentially harder as you go. Okay. So huh. so getting from 800,000 to a million is way more difficult than getting to the first 200,000 so to speak. Ah, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Well, I guess I guess we should almost have to go do that. I, I would love to. Look, I, I as I said, you know, I played this game. I remember it at my uncle's place. Uh, I never owned it myself. Played a couple rounds. Did not enjoy it. Uh, uh, but you know, I'm not going to let that skew my thoughts on it too much going into it. We're okay. going to wait until the break. We're going to play the game and we're going to come back and give it its ratings. Both as as we think we would have liked it, had mm. we played it back when it had come out, had come out, or like the early early 90s or yep. so, and how it holds up in the modern day against like some modern games like. A Assassin's Creed <laughs> <laughs> and Elden Ring Jr. Elden Ring Jr. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. Uh, the 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 burning question is: What's a better game, Donkey Kong Jr. or Elden Ring? Everyone's asking. Everyone's it. been asking. They won't it. shut up about and it. And we're the only ones brave enough to answer 100%. it. Hundred percent. Me and you know who else would probably be 
brave enough to answer this question? Who? Someone like Jim Cramer. Oh, wow. Yeah, really? he just hey? has those opinions that are strong, bold, like bulls. Yeah. Uh, uh, Is he still in the air? He's got to be. Yeah, probably. A guy like that doesn't go away. <laughs> There's enough you. people who are going to listen to him. He'll probably start a fucking podcast at some point. Can't wait. Just continue to be pushed out of the space that we were in for four years. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so let's go take a break. Let's play the game. If you're Absolutely. joining us for the gameplay, uh, we'll see you there. Otherwise, we'll see you guys on the other side. Yeah, two shakes of a Pauline's tail. Mm. Yeah, what a tail it is. <laughs> oh, jeez. Just a reminder that you can now find our gameplay segments where we play through a portion of today's game and provide video commentary while doing it over on our Patreon, patreon.com slash the retrograde podcast. Join the Mushroom Club for $5 US per month for access to all the gameplay, plus two to four bonus episodes per month where we do things like character drafts, top 10 lists, and even take some suggestions from our community. So show some support to the podcast by joining the Mushroom Club at patreon.com slash the retrograde podcast for access to bonus content and all of our gameplay segments. We'll see you guys on the other side and welcome back to the retrograde <laughs> yeah <laughs> so, dude <laughs> this is big day for mike are you here to interview me or what what's happening i, here? I can yeah, yeah what let's do that okay let's, let's start off this all way. right thank you very much uh mikey mikey andrew uh, bascom the retrograde podcast yeah the uh the dumb looking one over there okay In the wow. shirt <laughs> yeah yeah well i am wearing a shirt that's uh that's correct uh, so today, yeah, you had a lot of success out there. Can you explain uh -huh. what was going through your head during that famous run? Yeah, you know what? I'm going to answer your question with another question. Oh, um, why don't you explain to me what you saw out there? History being made? I'll answer it for you. History being made. All right? <sighs> young man. Jesus. Young, dumb, full of cum. Had a big breakfast. Is this you? I don't want to spoil <laughs> anything here. Okay, except for breakfast. Except for breakfast. <laughs> So this man picks up, sorry, you were going to ask a question. Sorry, I was just going to say to the stupid looking one, <laughs> to the real piece of shit over there. You. Oh, me. Oh, so from the last question. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, is that the same guy? Yeah. Sorry, he's just got a very generic looking face. That is true. Uh, <laughs> that is true. Okay. So when you were playing Donkey hey, uh, Kong. Uh, <laughs> preset number one in the RPG with the question. <laughs> It is very true. I never have to change my skin tone in a creative character for any video game. Uh, You're like, can you go lighter? Yeah, yeah it's translucent. Um, so when you finished Donkey Kong Jr., you uh -huh. you you ran a, you beat the game. I did, and then went around it, almost beat it again. I did. My victory lap ended up almost being another full ass race. Right. And you, 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 before the game, you mm -hmm. said uh, over under 16 K mm -hmm. no problem with the over. And you did, you got to 22, put it this way. Babe Ruth steps up to play, right? The big bopper. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, so, so Babe Ruth steps up to play and goes, hello, baby. <laughs> I'm going to hit a baseball points to left field. Center, but yeah, good. He points to the outfield. Points to the outfield. Bunch of angels there. Yeah, tons of angels. And he says, that's where my ball's going. Yeah. Yeah. Calls Imagine the shot. then he hits the shot. Yeah. And it goes so far in that direction. Yeah. That it comes back and hits him in the back of the head. Wow. Because it went around the fucking world. Wow. I'm that's how far. It's got stamps from other countries like mm. Bugs Bunny through that fucking thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. That's what happened to me. Wow. I called my shot at 16. I fucking doubled it. Yeah. And everyone did. knows if you go double the length of a baseball field. Yeah. It comes back around the other yeah, side. Of the two earth. times the amount of runs. <laughs> two <laughs> times the amount of runs. <laughs> What's the equivalent of a three-point shot in uh, in baseball? Is hitting the ball so far that it travels the circumference of the earth back around the other But way. it has to hit you in the back of the head. It does. <laughs> or you have to see it coming and then hit it again. <laughs> hit it back the other way like a pendulum. You're playing tennis with yourself with a baseball traveling around the world. If you don't understand what's happening here, <laughs> understandable. Mikey beat the game, beat Donkey Kong Jr. Yeah. while we were playing over on Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash retrograde podcast. Yeah. He beat the game and nearly while circling it again, beat it again on the same turn. I literally came one frame away from yes. beating it again the second time. Crazy. So, uh, interesting. There are four levels in this game. Now, before you start to think that that makes it a less impressive feat, um, there are four really tough, tough, tough <laughs> levels. Uh, when you beat the four levels... You wouldn't know this, Andrew, but I'll explain it to no, the listeners. No, I, I wouldn't. When you beat the four levels, you just start back again at yeah. the beginning. 
Which explains what the high score thing was. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So um, um, that is to say, I beat the game, and in the beginning, I think I think starting the second round, I had twenty thousand points or something yeah. like that. So someone had to have beaten this game a lot of times. <laughs> I wonder how many times he would have had to beat it. Yeah. Yeah. A few hundred. Well, no, I think this game actually had a kill screen at uh, at number twenty two. Oh, so if you if you go through the game 22 times, there's a kill. Holy screen. shit. Uh, kill screen. If you're familiar with King of Kong is basically you get to a point where the game can no longer keep up with the score. Yeah, uh, there's a programming error and then it just kills you no matter what. You can't get past that point. That King of Kong, by the way, should be a Mushroom Club episode that we do. Oh, that sounds amazing. Yeah. Yeah. A very on theme for us, but like an incredible documentary. I recommend you totally go out in there and watch it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like it's it is it's it's fun in its way because of the four levels when we were like oh my god the game's over yes and you start it up again and it's very impressive that you nearly did it again but like there is um it is impressive that it's only four levels like it's almost like oh wow okay now here's yeah. the thing if you know from from the perspective of 2022 40 years after the, the release of this game mm -hmm. four levels sounds like it's not a lot but they are fairly imaginative levels. Mm -hmm. They're wildly different from one another. There's kind of like a thesis statement to each one. The first is a generic jungle scene. Um, and generic premise of this game, you got to climb up vines, uh, collect fruits on each vine. If you're holding on to two vines, you can climb up faster. Yep. If you're holding on to one vine, you can go down faster. So there's some strategy to make sure you're, you're uh, either connected to two or one vine. Uh, if any of the enemies touches you, you die. If you jump over an enemy, you get points. Mm -hmm. And you have to make your way to wherever Mario is holding Donkey Kong captive. Now, the first level is just a generic jungle scene. Mm -hmm. You're going up the vines. I playing that I was like this is boring as fuck like yeah. if this is all we get I don't want to play this game very much anymore mm -hmm. the second level is slightly more elaborate there's like a weird pulley system they vary the enemy types a little bit there's almost a puzzle mechanic to try to get up to the proper places in the screen there's like some moving moving platforms essentially the third level is like you've entered Tron like it's weird as fuck there's like an electric area and there's instead of animals there's sparks that you have to dodge yeah yep. so i don't know how we got there no and then the fourth level there it's almost like you're in a tower and you have to climb up the vines and insert keys which are at the bottom of each vine if you if you start below them and move up the vine you push the key up and you have to push it up all the way to the top to enter into a lock mm -hmm. and then when you do that you kill mario <laughs> yeah mario dies so uh, varied levels but the color scheme changes mm -hmm. the thesis changes the premise of, of what you're doing changes and the pacing of of the entry of the enemies and where they're coming from changes so it did feel like going from level to level was was fun mm -hmm. I, I did kind of find it fun playing them mm -hmm. was a different story yeah now, what was your experience playing this because I limited li it was limited yep and I, after having beaten it, you didn't you didn't want to play anymore. Well, you were you were circling it and I'm like you're like you want to do one more turn I'm like no, I'm yeah, good. Yeah. I just don't also know what I would have tr truly gotten from it. Truly. At that point, at that point it's just you're just trying to get better. Yes. You've played the game. Yeah. You're just trying to actually get better at it, which is a different skill set entirely. It was very experience. difficult for you. Uh yeah, sure. Getting better? Yeah. Mhm. Mm Let's go with the next question. Uh, oh, over, uh, over to. Uh, let's go with the. Wait, did we ask? Uh, hang on, let me just cover this. Hey, Pam, it's my assistant. Okay. Hey, shh, what are you talking to me shh, for? Shh, shh, shh. Okay, I'm talking to my other assistant, Carl. <laughs> Carl, I'm telling Carl this is Pam. Pam, Pam Carl. <laughs> uh, Carl, this is Pam. Pam, um, did we ask the dumb-looking guy a question? Yeah. What about the like generic-looking one? They're the same. The same. The, those two are the same human beings. Are you sure? Is it my eyes? Is something wrong? <laughs> Carl, did you check my prescription? Randy. Question. Randy had Question. the prescription. Stop uh, saying names. The, the guy doing the Zig Heil. Uh, oh, for God's sake, I just have my hand up in the air. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> like you just don't care about the Jews. <laughs> Jesus Christ. How in the world am I supposed to like... And he says, Jesus Christ. Case proven. Oh, Jesus. Uh -huh. <laughs> Question from the dumbass. <laughs> So from the Nazi in the in the oh stands. Oh my God, Richard Spencer, I'll take your question. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> gotta watch out. I'm not gonna, gonna get, get punched. punched. <laughs> gotta watch out. I'm not getting punched. Um, in, this has to be one of the greatest accomplishments accomplishments of your very sad life. Mm -hmm. 
where would you put it in the top five? Because it has to be Ooh, probably so top So you're three. saying I have to fill out the top five. Yeah, I was going to say, what else is there? Carl? Yeah, I got you for pretty cheap. Hiring eh? Carl. <laughs> yeah, hiring Carl. Hiring Carl. Less than minimum wage uh, wow. contract loophole. Sure. That's got to be at least number three. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been doing a podcast for four years. Okay. Um, with this guy. I want to say. I want to say. Andrew. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Andrew. Yeah, Andrew. Yeah. So that's got to be five. That's, that's got to yeah. be five. Yeah. Carl's still ranking in at number three. Yeah. Nathan, yeah. yeah. Number four. Uh-huh. That's got to be uh, surviving this far. Okay. Uh, um, in the podcast? No, no, just in life in general. Okay. I didn't know that I'd be able to do it, but oh, I've mastered the you. art of crossing the street at the correct time. Mm-hmm. That's number four. Frogger. Yeah. Yeah. Frogger mm-hmm. is, is yeah. number number two, I would say, is um, I made some good investments. I started a company and sold it for $214 million uh, a little while ago. So that's probably number two. Two, uh, I've been coasting on that a little bit. Jesus. Uh, well, actually, it's a lot I don't know about you. You know what? I, I did donate most of those to uh, to to build schools and and feed the poor uh, across the world. That's anonymously, anonymously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I don't want anyone to know that it was Mikey Aaronworth who did that. Right. Um, uh, number two. So that's number two. Number one. Yeah, would probably be yeah, Donkey, number one beating Donkey Kong. Well, congratulations. Thank this you. It's a really big day for you. It's a really big day for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, as far as some of the classic NES games that we've played, I'll ask you a question now. Oh, uh, Pam. Um, <laughs> fuck. Hey, Pam. Feels like a weird casual. <laughs> it's not. Damn it. As far as the classic, you know, you can answer this one. Thanks. Uh, question master. As far as the the classic NES games that we've played in the past, I'm thinking, you know, we played Excite Bike, we played Wario's Woods, we played, which was notoriously the last NES game mm-hmm. uh, to have come out, at least published by Nintendo. Um, where does this rank for you? Not, not. I'm not saying like compared to the other ones necessarily one to one, but like better or worse than the average. Uh, I would say this is the average. This is the average. Yeah, I I think it's. I, you know, I, I told you, I know you said don't compare them, but like Warriors Worlds, Warriors Woods, excuse me, is still, I think the best one that we've yeah, done. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just interesting. There's a lot of like levels to it that, that there's like a real gameplay aspect of it. It's really good. This is kind of like Frogger. You know what I mean? This yeah, is a little bit like, like the, there, there's something generic to the puzzle element of yeah, it. Pick yeah. a lane, get out of the lane when there's a bad person sure, coming. Sure. Pick a lane, get out. Um, which is, which is totally fine. It's, it's a game. It's 40 years old. Like that's, it's a totally understandable why there would be parts of the game that haven't, uh, you know, advanced past that. But I think this is just pretty much the average because it's a totally playable game. It's interesting enough. Yeah. But it's not going to be like, Oh my God, did you remember playing that game? Oh my God, what an incredible, you know. And it feels like history has kind of forgotten it in that way. Absolutely. I mean, history remembers Donkey Kong Jr., but history remembers Donkey Kong, as we talked about before the break, the original Donkey Kong, way more than than this. Yeah. And for, for good reason. I, I do like that it's quirky. I do like that they changed, they took a bit of a big swing. They probably just could have reskinned the original Donkey Kong and got away with it if they if they wanted to, but that's not really Nintendo steez, so they didn't Ooh, do it. look at that. It's pretty cool. I'm cool yeah. now because I yeah you're cool because you won because I won. Is that, that what winning's winning? Cool. Yeah, winning winning tastes awesome. Winning tastes amazing. <laughs> um, and tastes like something uh, your mom taught me in her basement. Oh was... no! Come on. Yes. Don't stop that. <laughs> Don't stop that. No. Okay, I can keep going. God damn it. <laughs> um, God had nothing to do with that experience. Uh, he was nowhere to be seen. He should have beatified me. Um, but you, you look at something like the NES, you know, we did play a lot of other games on the NES, but it's almost like the NES was two separate consoles. One console is what it was back in the early eighties, like 1983, when it first came out, you know, 83, 84, 85, whatever. And then you get some of the games towards the end of its life cycle. Like Ninja Gaiden was on the NES Mm -hmm. and that was a fucking great great game. game. Way more elaborate than this. Almost hard to believe they came from the same console. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, however, it's, t- it's tough to compare like those two eras of the NES because they were so different. I guess they were just figuring out how to get the most amount of power out of the NES. And that happens with every console cycle. But in spite of that, we're looking back on this game that now exists in the form that we just played it. And we played all of it. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm, I find myself feeling similar to playing something like Excite Bike, where I'm right. like, what more would I need to get out of that? It would basically just be like running laps. Mm. And... Not in the same rhythmic way as you would if you're playing something like Tetris, a puzzle game like Tetris, sure. where you're like, 
here's the here's the playing field. Go play the game. It's all self-contained. This is like, go just repeat levels. Mm -hmm. And some people may like the variety in that, but I think that the fact that it changes with every completion of the level, it sort of makes it feel disjointed and like it's not just one self-contained experience in the way that Tetris is. And I think that detracts from it a little bit. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that, I would agree with you. I, uh, I think there's obviously... It's funny because you wouldn't look at the game and go like, there's a lot of flaws. Yeah. Like there's not a lot of flaws. Yeah. Like I think the fact that he drops more than two feet, he dies. Like I think oh. that's very annoying and stupid. It's tough to get used to, but you're right. It may not be a flaw. Necessarily. No. And like, yeah, the, yeah, the controls are kind of weak, but it's not a flaw. It's just, that's the way it does it. But it is consistent. Yeah. Uh, it, it's slightly interesting. Yeah. But, but still excellence is just a little fur further from his grip of the vine, you know? Yeah. Excellence is not a... Good. Well said. Thank you very much. That was very, that was very well done. Appreciate that. What are you, a journalist? Uh, I, I, uh, at nighttime, you know, I, I, uh, I dabble. You dabble? Yeah. At nighttime? Yeah. I'm, I'm a crime reporter for a, a crime reporter. local, local paper. Oh, which, what's the paper called? It's called the daily, none of your fucking business. Mm, I, yeah. People, people say none of your fucking business daily to me as well. <laughs> yeah, so they do. I, I, I do. Care. I, imagine I imagine they imagine. would, especially with this new persona you've adopted. Oh, uh, I didn't adapt it. I earned it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I earned the shitty personality. I earned the <laughs> shitty personality. I earned the right to have it. Listen, <laughs> famous people get to be shitty mm -hmm. because they, they are better than other people. Yeah, it's because we coddle them. Yeah, we coddle. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. No, I wouldn't call this excellent mm. in any capacity. No. It's if you. Here's the thing. I find myself sometimes on this podcast feeling a need to find a way to like a game more. And yeah. it's usually when it has a, a mascot that I'm familiar with. Right. Or it's a game that I know because other people talk about it. And this game, because it has the Donkey Kong name attached to it, I'm almost trying to find a way to be like, it was really good. Yeah. It was, but it wasn't really good. No. Imaginative, yes. Fun to play beyond, you know, just the first four levels. I don't really think so. Imagine no. it for the time. Absolutely imagine oh, it for I, the time. Oh, I, yeah. I totally imagine this on the arcade. Like, I can totally yeah. see this, uh, you know, the same way. It it works very similarly to, to Donkey Kong. Yeah. I, I totally can see why this was successful. Right. But with the 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 viewing of 2022... It's it's really tough to get your head around it, and I guess yeah. we're kind of dancing around it. Should we get to our stories? Time to get to the reviews? I think I think it might be. So, Andrew, why don't you start us off? Give us your review out of four bits based on what you think you would have thought about this game had you played it back in the modern day. Because okay. we got to give it the two scores. One of them is is <laughs> usually it's what we actually thought about the game when we were kids. Very subjective review, and then yeah. the other one is actually how it holds up in the modern day because we don't have any experience having played it enough back in the modern yeah. day. We may have dabbled slightly. We're going to give it our review based on our impressions of it today. So, if you're young. Young, dumb, full of cum. Jesus Christ. <laughs> like me after breakfast. <laughs> what are you going to rate this game out of four bits? Um, okay. Uh, yeah. So I, I don't know if I would have loved this game. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what? I don't know if I would have loved this game now. That's a little preview to my score in t five minutes. But is that I don't know if I would have loved the game back then. Either. Sure. It's, it it would have been simple even back then because the time that I would have got around to playing it. The games would have progressed pretty far yeah, past yep, for sure. I just, even to the point that I'm playing, say, uh, you know, Sega Genesis and playing Sonic, there's just, it's hard to go back and then go like, and then there's also this game. Right. And you're like, oh yeah, right. Okay. Um, but at that being, that being said, it's, it's a totally fine game. It, like we're talking about earlier with the lack of excellence, it's just totally playable. It would have been interesting enough. If you put a quarter in it, you wouldn't have regretted it. Right. You know what I mean? You would have like played until it ran out and then went, oh, okay, cool. And then looked around. Sure. And then ran to Cruising USA or something like oh, that. Oh, hell right? yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm not going to give it a very high score, but it's a totally fine score at two and a half. Two and a half. Oh, two and a half. Yep. Wow. As a kid. Higher, higher than I would have expected for you to be honest. Yeah. Um, so here's the thing. I mentioned just before you're going to your review, the retro score is always very subjective. Oh yeah. And that's going to play very particularly and significantly into my review oh, because boy. I was a young kid probably would have played this game in like 93, 94 or something 10 years after its release, 11, 12 years after its release. Okay. Uh, depending on, on which year it was that I actually played it. And at that point, as you mentioned, there were already much better games, much, oh, yeah. I shouldn't say that much more elaborate games, much more technically Exciting. advanced games at the time. Exciting. So my experience of games that had proceeded mm -hmm. was very limited and was kind of handpicked by being just the best of them. So of course I knew what Donkey Kong was. The reason I didn't know what Donkey Kong Jr. was, was 
it was from a bygone era for me at the, at the time that I was playing it. And it wasn't as good as the other games from the bygone era. So when I tried it, not only did it lack familiarity to me because I was familiar with something like Donkey Kong and this was just like a new game coming in that seemed lesser than um, it was also not the kind of game that I wanted to be playing at that point right. in time either. So I bounced off of it completely. It felt too hard. The controls felt too slow. I knew I had better games to play and I would have had no reason to really want to go back and play this game. Now I say this and you have to, I, we say this all the time and we always get people pissed off at us for, for doing it. The retro score is incredibly subjective. Oh boy. This one's a one out of four for me. Whoa! <laughs> because I, I, I didn't enjoy it. I had, I'll compare it to this. When we talk about playing games in the modern day and we say, this is a good, say it's a sports game or like, this is a good hockey game or whatever. Okay. But to play that version of a hockey game from like 2004 today in 2022, hockey games have gotten better. So if I want a modern hockey game, I have a way better version right now to play that's comparable essentially one-to-one. -one. In the 3D era, they're all trying to mimic the same sort of thing. Back then, there was a style of arcade game that this Donkey Kong Jr. mimicked, and I just think it was way worse than all the other ones there. So if I wanted to play an arcade-style game, even today, I would pick up one of those ones. So back in the day, I absolutely would have been all over Donkey Kong uh, as like the best of them. Mm -hmm. And even then, I didn't love that style of game. Yeah. So I wanted nothing to do with Donkey Kong Jr. as a kid. And there's a reason why I played it and then never wanted to play it again. That's very fair. Wow, a one. I did not see that coming. Yeah. So uh, that's a three sorry and a half any out Donkey of Kong Jr. Oh fans. Oh my yeah. God. This is coming from the guy that beat the game, but... That is only day. in the modern day. Yeah. So let's get to our modern day scores. I think you and I are going to do a little uh, reverse. We just don't know it yet. <laughs> this game's not a lot of fun. And yeah. there's just kind of no way around it in my, in, you know, we're talking about being subjective and stuff like that. There's just no way in any world would I pick up this game. Sure. Like I just, after playing that, I'm like, oh, I'm good. Like there is so much good out there. This would barely be a phone game. Uh, that I just, I, I guess if you like Donkey Kong Jr., I like, I'm talking about that. I'm talking about the most base level compliments I can give someone. Yep. If you like Donkey Kong, cool. If you like uh, puzzle kind of rhythmic games like, like that, okay, maybe. And also, I'm going to say the other thing that I do that's a very condescending thing I say to things. There's nothing technically wrong with it. It totally plays. Like, it's not broken. Yeah. But it's not a good game. Uh -huh. And I would not go back and play this game. I am giving it a one out of four. A one out of four. Yeah. Um, I understand that. I do. Because it's a slow game. I think that, especially because of doing this podcast, I've grown an appreciation for the style of games that I did not like as a kid. Right. Retro games have burrowed their way into me for one part sentimentality and one part just enjoyment of an older formula. I've, I've found ways to enjoy it. Sure. This game is kind of that. And, okay. and one thing that sticks in my mind as I try to find ways to 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 like dampen my experience because I understand how you wouldn't have enjoyed this one. One thing I keep thinking is like, I did not expect that from this game. Mm. I didn't expect there to be that variation in the levels. I didn't expect to learn how to play it as well as I did as quickly as I did. Mm. And I think there's something to be said about that. It looks, you know, we, we talked before playing this game about how hard and intimidating it can be sometimes to really learn the formula of a new game and get into it, jump into it with both feet and how much time that can take. This was intimidating when we first start, started and I was like, I don't want to play this game. Mm -hmm. By the end of it, kind of like Spy Hunter, I got it. I was yeah. like, oh, it's clicking with me. I get this. I like this. The, the levels change quickly. They change often. So you're getting that change in, in perspective. Uh, sometimes that feels disjointed, but in this case, I kind of liked it because it felt like I was making progress in a way that it doesn't feel like you're making progress in Tetris. It's not the greatest arcade game that I've ever played, but I enjoyed it slightly more than average. I'm going to give this one a two and a half out of four. Wow, we perfectly flipped. Holy yeah, yeah, crap. Yeah. Okay, so that together is going to be a seven out of 16. Uh, yeah. 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 Yeah, that is. I, 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 I think that's fair. I think that's totally fair. And I also want to keep in mind, this is what I wanted to say to you before we get to the award ceremony, is to say that, like, you could get honest about saying that, like, well, that's too low. This is a classic game. You know who also didn't think much of this game right now? Nintendo. True. Because they are not highlighting it to say, like, look at the classics of our... 100%. You know what I mean? If they did that, then we really have an argument there to go, like, oh, they really think it's something special, and we don't. Not only that, 
where are the rest of the Donkey Kong Jr. games? You know, he's he's a, a minor character in some of the Mario sports games right now. Yeah, it's but your like, favorite kind of character, yep. But the juniors? The uh, minors. No, oh no, my. people that Cole. Uh, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> no, he's he he's just nothing. He yeah. went away. This franchise died. And you know, as much as it was popular, it was the eighth most popular arcade game, things like that. You know, it's it's hard to say that the legacy is so strong because maybe the the games originally weren't as great as originally thought. Yeah. And and I also think this this score of a 7, you know, marred by a 1 in each of the scores from yes. from either of us is telling you know you need to take the context of our reviews into account uh and and i think that seven is warranted is it a little low perhaps yeah, but maybe. i think we we spoke our piece on it just based on the types of game players we are where you can see this as a seven listen to our reviews disagree with the ones on either side of yep. it and get something better out of it like Absolutely. that's 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 all you got to do stop uh, stop coming at us yeah yeah everyone shut up <laughs> <laughs> oh wait wait okay oh. oh i hear some music i hear some music and i hear some cameras todd snaps waiting for us on the red carpet let's oh, go over the award ceremony you've been waiting for it all year the most glamorous award ceremony of the week ladies and gentlemen the Grady's. Mm, here we are wow here we are in the thick of it yeah are these cameras here for me because I beat the game today. I think they would be here for you, to be honest. I think they would be here for me. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. No, no. You deserve it. You you kicked the shit out of this game. I did kick the shit out of this yeah. game. I did break my computer mm -hmm. when I died the first time. Yeah. You were so mad. Yeah, yeah. And then I just played one of my head games as well. And and Head you, games? Yeah, I was looking. Well, I mean, you you know, you were here. I know you were kind of uh, 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 just playing into the, the, the illusion. I was staring at a cracked screen saying, Andrew, look at me. I'm beating the game. I'm beating yep. the game. Yep. And you said through the duct tape over your mouth, uh, and you were so proud of me yeah. and and then i ripped the duct tape off of you and you said give me my lips back like a classic cartoon that's character such a that's <laughs> such a good cartoon character i love thing. that that I is that. so amazing okay so elliot coming out dressed in his little white onesie little you know, white just, onesie uh, just like with the cut off arms just like dk jr just like doko joe so doko joe uh why don't yoko show us the awards that this game won elliot reach into that uh he is the yoko of this podcast he is the, he's gonna break us up at <laughs> yeah, some point yeah, uh, uh uh, why don't you reach into that furry chest area of yours, pull out the envelope, and let us know the awards this game won. Who's more muscular? Who's more muscular? Seriously, Donkey Kong or Elliot? I thought that was Donkey Kong. Oh, well, Jesus Christ. Sorry, award. Thank you. The hermetically sealed vault of expectations. Oh, wow. The hermetically sealed. Well, I like that I have to do a sound effect I know. after the, the drop. It's, it's If people forgot what they just listened to. Yes. Here it is again. Well, they are pretty dumb. <laughs> uh, they are as dumb as you look. Okay, thank you. That's great. <laughs> awesome. Okay. That's what he thinks of all of us. Just I want you to know here. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's a real Homelander situation here. <laughs> <laughs> I am better than you. <laughs> Homelander. Hope everyone's maybe watching the best, that. Maybe the best character in TV history. Okay. Yep. <laughs> Apart from DJ Paul E.D. Well, yeah, Shore. I was going to say. <laughs> I was going to say DJ Paul E.D. That's really insulting. Yeah. That's no, it. No, that's it. That's it. That's, that's, it. It. that's yeah. it. Yeah, Homer Simpson, get out of here. Homer Simpson, get out of here. Their hermetically sealed vault of expectations, weirdly, is the exact same score in the retro score and the current score, it took a weird path to get there, man. But here it is. Wow, three and a half on both of them, and because we reverse scores somehow, mathematically, mm -hmm. if we don't give it the same score, yeah, like like if you don't give it a three and a two, and I give it a three and a two, or a two and a three, if can it only get the hermetically sealed vault of expectations if we swap scores? No, because I could have given it, you could have given it a three and I give it a 0. 0.5 and then in the in the future. Oh, true. You yeah, know yeah, what yeah, I mean? Yeah, there's, yeah. there's different ways we could have gotten to those right. numbers, but right. there we are nonetheless. Hermetically sealed vault of expectations for Doko Joe, Donkey Kong Jr. <laughs> what a strange game. I If you were truly at home, yes. sitting there, mad at us. Uh-huh. I want to hear from you. I would love to hear from you. you. Tell us why we're wrong. Absolutely. Like, reach out to us. I, we will read that email next week. I promise oh, you. Oh, yeah, let's do it. We'll Honestly. Do it. Yeah, you know what? That goes to anyone. If you disagree with us or agree with us vehemently, yeah. uh, send us an email, uh, the retrograde podcast at gmail.com. You can also reach out to us on our socials. But uh, yeah, show our show our email some feed. Yeah. Uh, feed some, some love as well. 
Yeah, absolutely. If you, by the way, if you agreed with us, just give us a review. Yeah, just give us a review. Rate and review. A long way. I forgot to pull one to read before this episode. Yeah, but, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll have we'll one next, that next time. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, thanks everyone for listening. We love every single one of you, and we can't wait to talk to you soon. My name is Andrew Bascom, and with me as always is the bad boy of podcasting, Mr. Bebop himself, Mikey Aaronworth. This is the Retrograde Podcast. Game over. <laughs> <laughs> Want more retrograde in your life? You can visit our website for show notes at theretrogradepod.com. Follow us on Twitter at Retrograde Mikey, at Retrograde Andy, and the podcast at Retrograde Pod. Or Instagram at The Retrograde Podcast. For bonus episodes, check us out at patreon.com slash the retrograde podcast. Send your questions and business inquiries to the retrograde podcast at gmail.com. See you next week, D Pads. Furnished by Sad Styles Productions. To the stupid looking one. <laughs> to the real piece of shit over there.